Hello, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the bones and also the bony landmarks on the ankle and the foot complex. There are 28 bones within this region. There are seven tarsal bones, there are five metatarsals and then there are 14 individual phalanx bones known as the phalanges and also there are two bones underneath known as the sesamoid bones. But also you have to remember is that the ankle is also made up of the tibia and the fibula. So let's run through them to start with. So this is the distal part of the tibia and where it ends here is known as the medial malleolus along this region here and then the distal part of the fibula is known as the lateral malleolus and that is a part here. The tibia is mainly the weight-bearing bone and then around 15% is taken from the fibula in terms of weight-bearing but the majority is coming from the tibia. The tarsal bones, we've got seven. The largest tarsal bone is known as the calcaneus which is also known as the heel bone and you can see the shape of it here. There is actually a bony landmark on this medial side and is called the calcaneal tuberosity just here and then that will be where the plantar fascia will attach on this area here. Also on the medial side there is a area just here and it's where the next bone called the talus or talus will sit and then this area is known as the sus tentaculum tali. And if you think of a word almost like sus tentaculum it almost means like it's a suspension. So where the talus is suspended within this sort of area in here. It's almost like a, like a shelf on this region just here. And then that area is also palpable in terms of uh, palpation where we can actually feel that area. The second largest tarsal bone is known as the talus and superiorly, superiorly I should say, it articulates with the tibia to form the ankle joint with the fibula on its lateral side. Moving distally towards the foot, we have got the navicular bone along here. This is similar sort of shape to the scaphoid within the hand. There is a bony landmark just here called the navicular tuberosity. And then this area just here is where the attachment of the tibialis posterior comes down along here. Distally, we have got the three bones known as the cuneiforms or cuneiforms. We have either got the first, second and third. But we can also call them the medial cuneiform, the intermediate and the lateral cuneiform. So it's your choice. First because it relates to the first metatarsal, the second because of the second, and the third because of the third interaction with the metatarsal along here. So they are the three cuneiform bones. On the lateral side, we have got the last of the tarsal bones called the cuboid. And the cuboid almost has a, like an area, like here, I call it like a pulley along this region just here. And then that will be where the peroneal longus will come around or the fibularis longus comes around and then comes under the cuboid bone and then it will go towards the medial cuneiform and first metatarsal over here. It almost like fills that sort of space. You can see that shape just here. We have five metatarsals and the great toe side which is known as the hallux is the first and this will be the second, third, fourth, and the fifth metatarsal. This is known as the base of the fifth metatarsal here, and it's easily palpable. And then that will be where the peroneal brevis or fibularis brevis will come down and attach. Quite common, you can have what we call an avulsion fracture, where part of the bone pulls away because of its tendon attachment. Or the tendon itself can actually just pull away. And sometimes you can go over on an ankle and damage it there. Working distally, we have got 14 
individual phalanx bones that make up the phalanges. On the great toe, which is the hallux, we have only got a proximal and a distal phalanx, whereas on the second, third, fourth and fifth side, we have got the proximal and we've also got an intermediate or the middle phalanx and a distal. So we've got three phalanx bones on the smaller digits. If I turn the foot over, there are two sesamoid bones which grow within the tendon of the flexor hallucius brevis and you can see the lateral side and the medial part of the sesamoid bones in here. So you can see the two little bones around that area. There is one landmark on the lateral side along here. You can't really see it that well. This is known as the peroneal tubercle and basically where the peroneal muscles come around that tubercle is held in place by a piece of fascial tissue known as a, a retinacular and then that will just hold these tendons in place. And posteriorly on this area of the calcaneus will be naturally where the Achilles tendon will attach and no doubt that is easily palpable. So what I've done, I've covered the majority of the bones and the majority of the landmarks that are associated to the ankle and foot complex. I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching.